Hey IELTS fans, IELTS Den here, recording for the first time. Today, just wanted to dive into a series preview as our New York Islanders will face the Carolina Hurricanes for the third time in the Stanley Cup playoffs since 2019. Back in 19, Carolina swept New York, and last season, Carolina once again beat the Islanders in six games. This season, Carolina finished with 111 points to the Islanders' 94. Carolina finishes second in the Metro, Islanders finish third. As we dive into this series, nobody is giving the Islanders a chance. Carolina is the odds-on favorite to win the Stanley Cup. It's been smooth sailing for them, especially since acquiring Jake Gensel and Evgeny Kuznetsov at the trade deadline. On the other hand, it's been anything but smooth sailing for the Islanders. Patrick Waugh came in to replace Lane Lambert in January, the worst penalty-killing unit in the National Hockey League. Inconsistent play, blown leads, but here we are. None of it matters now as both teams get a clean slate and will face off Saturday night. Step one for the Islanders is very simple. They have to get off to fast starts in this series. Last year, when they played Carolina in the playoffs, the games they scored first were Game 3, Game 5, Game 6. They won Games 3 and 5, and they lost Game 6 in overtime, and I believe they lost Game 6 because of mismanagement of the bench by Lane Lambert, but that's a story we'll get into on a different day. However, fast starts is actually something the Islanders have done well this season. They are tied for the second fewest goals allowed in the first period throughout the league. They only trail the Boston Bruins in that category. If you allow Carolina to sit back with their elite defensive personnel, their forwards that play a 200-foot game, you're going to be in trouble. We know the Islanders are a team that's not built for comebacks, playing from behind, and I can't stress enough how important it will be against this Hurricanes team. So that's step one. We got to start fast. Step two is goaltending. That's the only position that I really give the Islanders a complete edge in this series. Semyon Varlamov is third in the NHL in save percentage with goaltenders that have played at least 25 games. Ilya Sorokin, Vesna nominee last year. He's won his last three starts after having some midseason struggles, but he seems to have found his game at the right time. As for Carolina, they're in a little bit of a rotation between Freddie Anderson and Peter Kochekov, and this is so important. Last season, you could argue the Islanders didn't get the goaltending edge in this series. In Game 2, Sebastian Ajo, the Islanders' Sebastian Ajo, put in an own goal on Elias Sorokin. Jacob Slavin scored from behind the goal line to tie the game in Game 2. And we all know the Paul Stastny goal that ended the series in Game 6 definitely wasn't Sorokin's best. They never get to that spot without Sorokin last season. He was overworked, and you absolutely cannot blame him. However, we didn't have the better goaltending. If Barlamov or Sorokin can really rise to the occasion here and give the Islanders the timely saves they need, we all know how important that is. So... Goaltending, fast starts are my first two factors here. Third, special teams. So the Islanders have the worst penalty kill in the NHL. Their power play is somewhere in the middle, I believe, but the penalty kill, it's not good. But another encouraging stat here, I know we all hate the refs, but the Islanders actually took the second fewest minor penalties in the NHL this season. They call the games differently in the playoffs. The reps will normally swallow their whistles more, let the boys play. So staying out of the box is a major factor. Second least amount of penalties in the NHL. So I think this team is showing good discipline, and discipline will be everything in this series. You can't let Carolina get going on the power play. You want to keep it five-on-five where the Islanders are actually pretty good. Carolina is better five-on-five, but... Once again, the Islanders know their position here. They're the underdog, and in order to have the best chance to win this series, you have to keep it five on five. The last part, really for me, is the mental. So 
this season, the Islanders have been through so much. They're battle-tested. They've had a goaltending change. They've had a coaching change. They've had injuries to their core players. Ryan Polak has been out. Adam Pellick missed time. Scott Mayfield's done for the year. And most recently, Noah Dobson's missed the final stretch of games where the Islanders punched their ticket to the playoffs. On the other hand, Carolina, it's just been smooth sailing for them. They haven't been through the adversity the Islanders have. And in the past, when adversity has hit the Hurricanes in the Stanley Cup playoffs, I'm not so sold on how they responded to it. They got swept by Florida last year in the conference final, a series they were favored to win. They choked away a game seven back in 2022 against the Rangers. These two series are the ones I'm looking at. Prior to that, they lost to the Lightning in 2021. The Lightning were the best team in the league. They won the Stanley Cup. That's fine. But, you know, expectations are high, and you never know. The Islanders can get off to some fast starts, tighten some sticks over there in Carolina, and that really, those three things are really what gives the Islanders a chance here. Goaltending, scoring first, staying out of the box, and these are things the Islanders all do very well. So take what you want from these statistics. They play the games for a reason, and we'll see. Game one begins Saturday night. I give the Islanders a chance to win this series. I like that nobody else is. That's when the Islanders are at their best, when they're underdogs. Nobody picked them in 2021. Nobody picked them in 2020. Thank you for listening, everyone. Puck drops Saturday night, 5 p.m. in Raleigh.